Hi everyone. Um, I hope you're all doing okay. Uh, today I would like to do a video, um, as you can probably see behind me, the background's a little bit different, and that's because we are currently at my parents' cottage. Um, we will be moving in the spring, uh, so at that point, um, I should have more of a sort of dedicated uh, space to uh, to film. Um, I would like to talk about a discovery that I've made. I recently discovered that bookish YouTube channels are in fact referred to as booktube channels. And I've discovered a number of these booktubers and I thought it would be really, really great to make my own bookish YouTube channel. My YouTube channel was already already going to be about books, but I had no idea that there was this whole community of wonderful, wonderful people uh, on YouTube. So, that being said, um, I would like to... I was watching um, some videos by uh, Hannah from A Clockwork Reader, and that's her channel. You should go check her out. She is amazing, fantastic, incredible. I love her videos. Awesome, awesome, awesome person. So definitely go check her out. I will link her, her channel below because I can't remember exactly what, what video it was. Um, but anyway, I'll link her channel below. She, though, at some at one point did the um, newbie booktube tag. And I was kind of just watching some of her videos, and I stumbled across this tag, and I thought that it would be really fun to do. She, Neither she nor anybody else has tagged me in this. No one has said anything to me about it. I just happened to stumble upon it, and I thought it would be kind of fun to do, just to sort of introduce myself and some stuff about my reading, and how much I love books, and all that kind of great stuff. So, without further ado, let's just get into the questions. Question one. Uh, just give me a moment here. Okay, question one. Why did you start this channel? Well, I started this channel because I love to read. I love books. I love talking about books. I love talking about books that I'm currently reading, books that I have read, the authors who I love, the authors that I don't necessarily love as much. Um, why I like or don't like certain books. Um, I just love talking about books in general, and I don't really have a lot of friends um, outside of my husband and my parents who I can really, or family members or friends or whoever who I can really talk to about the things that I've been reading and the things that I enjoy reading. And I just thought it would be a really great opportunity opportunity for me to make some friends and to be a bit more social most of the friends that I had in high school and college and even now are book characters. I mean, I just, I spend a great deal of my time reading. Um, I love it. And my, my husband and my family, they also love reading. So it's very easy to talk to them about it. But I would love to have join this community to make some friends who love reading as much as I do. So that's about that. Um, number two, what are some fun and unique things you can bring to BookTube? Well, um, I don't know about fun, but as far as unique goes, um, I am autistic, so I definitely have a sort of a different perspective on a lot of things um, and kind of, I think, a different perspective on reading than 
some people. Um, obviously, I can't speak for everyone. I can't speak for anyone else, really, except myself. Um, but I think that I can bring sort of different perspective on, on things. But the reality is, though, is everyone brings a different perspective on things. So I'm not going to concern myself too much uh, with that, uh, just simply because I feel like just by being nature of being human and being a book lover and having the means and the willingness to join this community, this wonderful community, um, I feel like everyone here, at least from the booktube videos I've seen, uh, bring something fun and fresh and new and different and not so much fun but more fresh and new and different uh, to the community so yeah so I'm not going to concern myself so much with trying to stand out and be unique unique um I think it's just I think it's just by nature of kind of loving books and being part of the community, I think it'll be a lovely, lovely thing to, uh, to do. So, anyway, um, I'm sorry if you can hear my husband's movie in the background. So, yeah. So, I'm not going to concern myself too much with that. Question three, what are you most excited about for this new channel? I am super, super excited. I am excited to have a YouTube channel. I am excited to be on YouTube, to be a part of that community. I'm excited to be a part of the BookTube community. I am just so happy about the fact that I found BookTube and the fact that I can have a place where I can come on and I can talk to people about the things that I'm reading. I just, BookTube is going to be probably a lot of like my safe place. I mean, I am so happy that I found this community and that I can come on here and I can talk about the things that I'm reading and rant about the things I like reading and the things I don't like reading. Yeah, I think it's going to be, and I think we're going to have a lot of fun. It's going to be a good time. It's going to be a really good time. All right, so, you, uh, so that. yeah, okay, uh, question four, why do you love reading? How long do we have? <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, so many reasons. So, so many reasons. I don't even know where to start. Um, I think the, the three biggest things that I love about reading, the three biggest things. Now, there's a list of thousands of things I love about reading. But I think the three biggest things, sorry, I have to do four, four biggest things. The first biggest thing is the escape it provides. Um... I feel like it's so amazing to be able to pick up a book anywhere and carry it with you anywhere and to, while you're carrying a book, to actually be carrying around this whole other world, literally this entire other world within those pages and to be able to open it up at any time and go through this portal into this other world and to just be swept up by this story and to just be a part of that and have these characters that become your friends and to just books can really do that and I know when I was in high school I had almost no friends um I was very much a loner I felt very alone and misunderstood a lot of the time and books really book characters they I had one best friend in real life but Aside of her, book characters were my friends. I spent probably three quarters of my time reading. Reading was how I dealt. It's how I got through that escape it provided. It just was so wonderful. And it's, it's a healthy escape, 
too. You know, there's a lot of escapes that are a lot worse than reading a book. So definitely uh, when you need to just escape and de-stress, reading is is definitely a, a thing. Um, the second biggest thing is, again, the world. To be able to carry around an entire world between the pages of a book, to me, it's just incredible and phenomenal and something that I love so much, and I wouldn't trade for anything. I mean, it's just so beautiful. My grandma used to say to me, books need to be heavy because they contain entire worlds inside them. And she was right. Um, I think the third thing that I love is how it can affect other people. If there's someone who really maybe don't always see eye to eye with and you have something that you want to explain to them but you feel like you're having a hard time with it sometimes having someone else sometimes having your favorite author explain it to them works better a lot so a lot of times you know you could say you know hey you know i i read this book it was really good and put Pick a book that has a passage in it that explains exactly what you're trying to say to them. And then you give it to them and they read it. And sometimes just having that that other voice explain something to them, it just it clicks somehow. It's just something in it in that it just clicks and they go, ah, oh, okay. I, I see what you're saying now, you know? So that's helpful. And also, just books are the most wonderful books you can give. I mean, they really are. The gift, the gift of reading is, and we have to keep making copies of books and reading copies of books. We have to keep making and reading and publishing books and giving to our libraries and encouraging reading because it's so important. I don't want to lose ever that ability to escape that portal, that, that beauty that can be found between the pages of a book. One of my dreams is actually to one day write my own book. Um, that's may or may not happen, but that is one of my dreams one day because But even if it doesn't happen, I still will always love reading. It's, you know, or even annotating books. You know, annotating, when you annotate a book and you write down your thoughts and you talk back to the characters and everything, that's a path to immortality. Because you're putting your thoughts and your sort of perspectives and things in this book and making almost kind of Yourself part of the story if that makes sense in a weird way so in that sense you are becoming part of the book and you are becoming part of the story and therefore when someone else reads it they are also going to read your thoughts and if they read that copy and therefore as long as that copy of that book lives you live as well if that makes sense as your thoughts live within the book. Anyway, so that's the third thing that I like about it, is what a wonderful, wonderful gift it is and can be. And I think the fourth thing is the fact that it's just fun. It's just fun, good, healthy, incredibly cheap entertainment. I mean, seriously, encouraging love of reading in your child or in your spouse or in whoever costs you what? You get a book from the library, it's free. You buy a book, brand new, it'll probably cost you, you know, a decent amount, but you buy a book from, from your local library's book sale room, you can find, I found beautiful hardcover copies of books in the book sale room of my local library. And because at my local library it's by donation, I was able to get, you know, quite a few books for very, 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 very cheap. 
I think I got like 13 books for like a dollar 17 or something like that. Like crazy, crazy. So, um, what, okay, next question. What book or series got you into reading? Uh, I've been reading as long as I can remember. And I think, honestly, the book, the books that really sort of started my interest in reading. Um, I remember when I was young, my mom used to read to me every night. She would read all kinds of things. She would read to me Dr. Seuss, Goosebumps, Berenstain Bears. Yes, Goosebumps. I loved Goosebumps as a kid. I have always been really big into, like, scary, spooky stuff, so that really shook my fancy. Um, but, um, yeah, like, everything she used to read to me. Crazy. But I think the book that really, 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 I mean, are we talking when I was, like, little, little? Like, just starting to read and, like, know the words. Because if that's the case, it would have been the Velveteen Rabbit. After the first time I heard that story, I started reading, um, not entirely, but I, I would, I would read to myself. I don't really remember when I started reading, to be honest with you. I've just kind of been reading ever since I can remember. And, but I do, I can't say that it's got me into reading necessarily but the two most influential books and series in my sort of reading life have been the velveteen rabbit and the lord of the rings so my mom read me the velveteen rabbit when i was little she also read to me the entire lord of the rings trilogy um when i was young so i loved that that was fantastic and I was always way above, like, I was way above everyone in my class, in my school, really. Well, not in my school, but in my grade. I was way, way, way above in my reading level. You know, kids who were, you know, my age were reading, like, Captain Underpants, like, the, the little Captain Underpants books. And there I am sitting reading a book like this like, like, Firewing by Kenneth Opel or something like that, you know, like, just crazy, crazy, crazy differences. So, in either case. Uh, I could go on, but I'm not going to, because I want to try to keep this somewhat short. It's not going to be, but I'm going to try anyway. Um, what questions would you ask your favorite booktubers? I have no idea. I would probably be too starstruck to even speak, to be honest. I admire my favorite book so much. So, 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 so much. I just, I, oof. <laughs> just, I get, like, chills just thinking about the idea of talking to my favorite book. Like, I, I get starstruck. You know, um, oh my god. I don't even know. Um, I think I would probably ask them for recommendations definitely of books that they think that I might that I would like and books and I would talk to them about the things that I'm reading and they could talk to me about the things that they're reading if they wanted to and uh yeah I think I would ask about specific authors and what they thought of them and you know have back and forth discussions and I think it would be a lot of fun I think it would be Okay, uh, what challenges do you think starting a booktube channel will be the hardest to overcome? Uh, what challenges do you think starting a booktube channel will be the hardest to overcome? I'm trying to understand that question. Like, what challenges, like, when you're starting a book your channel, what uh, challenges do you think will be the hardest to overcome? That must be what they mean. When starting a book, when you, when you start your booktube channel, 
what challenge do you think will be the hardest to overcome? That must be what they mean. Um, okay, uh, I think the hardest things to overcome will probably be just sticking to a regular schedule. Um, in my life, I my life gets very hectic a lot, and as much as I need routine and I love routine, um, getting a routine down and sticking to it, especially this last year, has been like this last year has been just garbage like throw it away like take it pack it up put it in the garbage can move on because it has just been crap quite frankly um, sorry if that word offends you but it has been it's been terrible just garbage Um, that being said, <laughs> I think getting down a schedule and sticking to it, um, is going to be a challenge for me, for sure. Um, the second thing I think would have been a challenge, and that would have been having a dedicated, uh, video space. Um, my husband and I are moving in the spring. Uh, my parents are doing a rent office, uh, for one of the houses that they own. So we will be owning that house. So when we move in the spring into the house that we will own in the future, um, I think, honestly, what's probably going to end up happening is that when we move, I'm definitely going to, when we move, try to get myself set up a dedicated video space, uh, preferably with, you know, my bookshelves in the background and that kind of thing. Um you know, a nice comfy corner. Um, I'm definitely going to try to have books in every room in the house. Um, but I think, honestly, I think, yeah, just getting that space set up is going to be one of the, one of the hardest things to. Okay. When did you start reading? I feel like I already answered this. I've been reading ever since I can remember. Okay, next question. Where do you read? I read everywhere I can. I read before I go to bed at night. I read when I wake up in the morning, when I'm having my tea. I read when I'm in the car. I read when I'm, you know, taking myself to the library. I read when I go to run errands. I often listen on audiobook. You know, so really, I'm reading when I'm running errands. I'm reading when I'm cleaning. I'm reading, like, I read all the time. Physical paper books, again, all the time. When I'm in the car, my husband's driving somewhere, I'll read. When I'm at home, I'll read. When I'm, you know, out and about, I'll read. You know, I try to always, always, always have a book on me if I can. Even in the bathtub, I read. What kind of books do you like to read? Huh. Well, um, I personally, okay, I love YA, okay, I love YA, especially YA fiction, okay, now, I also love fantasy, I, I, like some sci-fi and dystopian, some of it. Um, I'm very big into books with fairies and magic systems and goblins and fantastical creatures and um, just really, really books that really just draw you in, where you can really feel like you're there, like you're a part of the world. Um, the book I'm reading right now that really makes me feel that way is uh, An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Dihir. Um, I also love, 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 uh, Kenneth Opel, his writing. I kind of mispronouncing your last name. Opel. Kenneth Opel. Um, I love his writing so much. So, 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 so much. Um, I also loved Lord of the Rings. Um, wasn't too big on 
the Harry Potters and the Aragon series. That's more my husband's domain. He loves that kind of stuff. He's really big into, you know, Percy Jackson, Harry Potter, the Olympians, you know, all that kind of stuff. Aragon, all that, King Arthur, all that kind of stuff. Whereas me, it was more, you know, Lord of the Rings, um, like, uh, the, uh, the Hobbit, um, the, uh, the Tales, the Redwood Tales by, uh, Brian Jock, uh, with the, the squirrel, I haven't read the books in forever, um, yeah, just a lot of those, um, also when I was young I used to read the Hardy Boys all the time, that was awesome. Um, but yeah, now, Lord of the Rings, uh, An Ember in the Ashes brings up into here, um, the, uh, yeah, still looking for, uh, Kenneth Alpha's books, and, uh, the books by Brian Jock as well, um, I, I really, really enjoy, uh, his stuff, um, the other person I really enjoy, I know the books are written for kids, I always love them. I will forever love them. They are dear to my heart is um, the Roald Dahl books. So Matilda, the Twitches, all those. Yeah. Absolutely love them. Um, BFG, love them. Absolutely love them. And, uh, yeah, I think that about covers it. Oh, I do not like contemporaries. Contemporaries are not my friend. They have never been my friend. I do not like books about sad things. I do not like books about, well, not so, not so much sad things, but I don't like books about, you know, like real world, like, you know, racial injustice and drug addiction, and, you know, suicide and all these like really like heavy topics. That's just not me. And I would like to get into some new adult and like, because I am out of college now, but I am still like college age. So I would like to get into some new adult and maybe some adult, adult books. Um, the problem is though, is that a lot of those books have a lot of like cursing and swearing and like sex scenes and like vulgar stuff in them. And that's just not me. I just don't like reading about that stuff. I don't enjoy it. No, just keep that away from me. It's just not my thing. Sorry. Okay. Um, I think that's about it. I will end it there. Um, disclaimer. You don't like some of my answers. Sorry, but also too bad. You know, what I said is what I said. And my opinions, my feelings. Right. Glad we understand, not trying to offend you. Glad we understand each other. Okay. I gotta go and I will see you next time. Okay, everyone. Bye.